Hello everybody! Today we're doing a fast blast in the 2020 Honda Civic Type R. Definitely my favorite Honda on the market right now. Still, even since these things have come out, every time I see one on the road, I get really excited. They've got a really nice road presence. Yes, all of the uh, body kit and the accoutrement may be a little bit excessive, but it's also within a lot of people's taste, my own included. I like the craziness, I like that it's ridiculous, and I like that when it goes down the road, it looks different than your average city. So as we're driving here, they've made a couple nice little changes for 2020 over the last model car. You've got a couple little styling differences. They've made actual vents. They listen to people, so on the back and on the front. The front less so than the back, but there's actual vents. It's not just big plastic pieces covering up what could or should have been vents in the first place. And I think it helps make the car look a lot better. The little kind of teeth that they put in help break up the styling a little bit. I think those vents were a little thick, a little chubby, added a little bit too much just black open area to a uh, pretty overstyled bumper in the first place. But I think it looks a lot better now with the little touches that they've added. The grill is a little bit bigger, a little bit wider, and the carbon uh, strips that are on the bottom feel like they're a little bit stiffer than uh, the last one that we had. Um, so driving it around, I've been really excited that I've got to spend a good bit of time with this car. And uh, some of the other subtle changes they've made on the inside with this car. You've got an Alcantara steering wheel, Alcantara shift boot, a different size and shape uh, shifter knob. Personally, I like the last one a little bit better, but hey, that's just me. This new one is nice. The only real disadvantage and kind of gripe I have about these Type R shift knobs as a whole is if they get hot, man, woo, they will roast your hand out on a nice day. So some of the other stuff that they've added in this car, your Honda Sense has been improved. You get the next generation. You've got lane keeping assist in this car for the first time. Uh, so it's nothing that really changes the feel of the steering too much. If you play around with your modes and switch back and forth between Comfort, Sport, and R, you can get enough range of change in the steering that I don't think feel has really been affected by adding that. It feels like it's buttoned up a little bit more and after kind of flogging it around a little bit, it feels more composed. It doesn't feel quite as silly as the last one. The last one you could get it to step out a little bit, uh, maybe even promote some rotation, but this one just feels like it's gripped down a little bit more. It feels like it's hunkered down. The suspension feels like it's just tuned a little bit better over the last one. It feels a little bit more firm as it goes across the road. It's not harsh by any means. In comfort, it's actually surprisingly soft. Um, I've got it in R mode just cruising around right now, and it's not beating me up too bad. You definitely feel everything you drive over, but it doesn't shatter your spine as you do so. So your infotainment's about the same, the interior's about the same, the powertrain's about the same, but the driving experience has improved. And that's one thing I'm happy to report, is they keep making just these subtle little changes. And the Japanese are really good about that, especially with their performance cars. They make just subtle little changes over the course of the life of the car. Tiny little changes that you might not see on the surface. Oh, it's a percent here, a percent there. We changed some links here. But it really helps shape the car and really helps move it forward. And be an improvement over its counterpart from previous generations. And, you know, if you saw one of these go down the road compared to one of the older ones, you might not notice the difference, but that's not a terrible thing. You know, at least there's been consistency. They're not going wild with some of the restylings, but I think there's only so much wild you can do on this car. So it's really comfortable. These seats are awesome. They're incredibly supportive. They're really soft. They're really supple. They're not too tight. Uh, some can be really pinchy around the waist, and these find a nice balance of just giving you a lot of room and still actually holding in when you want to go drive like a hooligan. The Alcantara wheel is a nice touch. It feels much better than the previous wheel. I do worry about um, upkeep and making sure that it lasts a long time. The longevity would be the only concern because, you know, Alcantara wears a little bit faster than the leather does. But if it's your weekend warrior, it doesn't matter quite as much. The engine response is great. This turbo powertrain in this is a lot of fun. So they haven't really done anything over the 305 horsepower of the last gen, but it feels like plenty, man. This thing gets down the road in a hurry. Say, one of the only disadvantages is the fact that it kind of has a little bit of trouble hooking up 
in certain spots, and that's where all-wheel drive would probably benefit it quite a bit. Uh, the first change I would make if I owned it is putting some smaller and lighter wheels and tires on. Having had the wheels off of this car, they're really heavy. Um, so putting something on a little smaller with a little more tire would help uh, because this definitely has some pretty low profile tires and definitely also adds to that kind of road, that stiff road feel, which is a good and a bad thing. Some people really look for that in a performance car and some people, it drives them nuts. I'm, I don't really care. So is the Type R still relevant? I would say 100%. This segment is definitely growing. We've got the Veloster N now. We've got the Golf R, which is in a little different category because of its all-wheel drive. We've got the STI. We've got the uh, Long Gone Evo, if you choose to look for one of those on the used market. And you've got all these other things that are gonna start coming into this category. You know, you've got something from every manufacturer trying to improve their lineup and trying to expand into deeper performance categories, which I think everybody should do. Having sporty versions of everything is just nice. It offers somebody the option to get something fun if they so desire. Like I said earlier, when one of these drives down the road, it's still quite impressive to me as a car person. It's ridiculous, it still gets a lot of looks. This red one we have here looks awesome. The red color has really grown on me. It's a nice red, it's got a couple different levels. You get it out in the light and it's got almost a kind of orange hue to it. And it really sets off all the red accents. And uh, I like that the red, the black, and the white, which yes, are normally colors I could care less for, actually look really great on this car. So one thing that this Civic gets a lot of credit for, and rightly so, is how much storage it has. You can fit anything you want in this car, and then some. It has more storage capacity than some CUVs and SUVs out there right now. The amount of things you can fit in it are a really, really nice plus. It's a very well-balanced car to have as much fun and performance credential as it actually does have. I've been really, really impressed with this car every time I've driven it. It rises to the ranks as one of my favorite Hondas really quickly and for obvious reasons, but it earns that spot. It's a cool little car. It's got a lot of personality. It's got a lot of style. It's got a lot of crowd appeal. It can you know, pull in some crowds. You'll get some people who say hi to you at gas stations. It's, I think it's important to love your car and to love what you're doing. And I love this Civic. I think it's a great car from Honda and I think it's a nice, really nice when they just go ahead and flex their muscles and say, here's what we can do. This is something cool that we enjoy. We know that the Civic has been a great platform for a long time. It's been something that people are really interested in. They've been begging for a Type R here in the States forever. Let's bring it back. Boom, we got it. Now we have it and we can enjoy it. And when you see them out on the road, they still make you happy and I hope that they still continue to because this one's going to be a great car for a long time. The resale values have held great over the course of the people who have owned them since about 2017. You can still get a good bit of money for them. Yeah, it's, a, it's a good argument all around if you ask me, but uh, you know, that's, that's just what we're doing here today. So if you enjoyed this video, go follow us at Driven Summit on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, whatever, you know. You want to toss over some love i'd really appreciate it but until then i'm gonna go play with this type art see ya